Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Total Biscuit. I'm here to ask and answer one simple question. WTF is the mighty quest for epic loot. Interesting name for a title, isn't it? Well, you would think, listening to it, that it's some kind of comedy take on Diablo. You're kind of half right, ish, sort of, but there's a little more to it than that. So, this is developed by Ubisoft. It's a free-to-play game that's currently in closed beta. You can buy into it by buying one of the various packs that are available, which will give you premium currency and access to a different class and a bunch of other stuff. The top thing has a bunch of weapons and so on and so forth. But whatever the case, I think that I'm running this on the middle pack. That's the one that Ubisoft gave me, a kind of $40 or $50 pack. What is it all about, you might ask? Well, it's about raiding castles and defending your own. It is a mighty quest for epic loot after all, so you'll go into various floating castles, you will defeat the castle in as quick a time as possible, and you will run off with a bunch of cash and hopefully some loot in the process. With that loot you will upgrade your character in the Diablo style of fashion, as you can see right here I have some stuff. I really could do with better gloves. Turns out I actually have better gloves, there we go. Sweet. And an achievement. Thank you very much. Can you go away now? Gone. Thank, thank you. Getting in the way. What an absolute pest. Okay, let's sell the rest of this. The weird thing about this title is that it's not so much Diablo as is it's Diablo crossed with Dungeon Keeper. Because not only do you have to attack other people's castles, but you also have to defend your own castle. This is what my castle looks like right now. Now, this castle is reasonably customizable. This this room right here, I put that there. Every time I level my castle up, I will gain the ability to add a new room to it, and it will become progressively more complicated. I will fill my castle with devious traps and creatures in order to defend this, which is my treasure room. Now, the point is to either kill the heroes attacking you or delay them long enough that the treasure room locks down and they don't actually get to steal from it. If they steal from it, they can take about 20% of your current life force and gold amounts that are stored. And after you've been attacked a couple of times, it'll put a shield on you to make sure that can't happen. But people can still attack you, kill your creatures, it doesn't matter, they'll regenerate. And they can gain loot and gold from it. But the aim really is to be able to get to these chests before everything gets locked down to get the maximum amount of loot. So what an interesting little combination Bit of a genre mashing game going on here. So let's have a look at the options menu before I go into it. Show you exactly how is going, what is going on here. Well, let's just say it is, it is limited. <laughs> yeah, it is rather limited to say the least. I really don't know why Ubisoft thinks this is an acceptable options menu. I mean, really now, come on. There's nothing here. At least you get windowed, and win windowed full screen. That's nice, but the ability to customize the actual game's graphics other than messing with the shadow quality would be quite nice. Not what I would call advanced by any stretch of the imagination. Far as I can tell, there does not appear to be a way to rebind the keys either, which is lame to say the least. A lot of this game is mouse driven, so maybe you wouldn't care so much, but at the end of the day, maybe I have a mouse with multiple buttons. Maybe I'd like to bind my buttons to different buttons. Won't let me do that? Well, you suck. Stop that. It is in closed beta, so of course there is time for that to be fixed, but I would criticize it heavily for not being a game that actually has those options. Okay, so this area right here, this is the design aspect of the game. There's also an interesting castle management aspect to it, which is kind of similar to Facebook games in the sense that you've got mines in your castle, and over time these mines will accumulate the two main currencies of the game, that being gold or life force. And golden life force are spent on upgrades for your castle as well as upgrades for yourself. So let's say I wanted to get some equipment from the blacksmith for instance. I could craft it for gold or I can buy it for the free to play currency which is bling I believe. And I've got a bunch of that. I think you get like 5,000 with the default pack so I've spent quite a bit of that already. Now, that will allow you to sort of bypass the need to save up money. You can just buy really good items from this particular shop here. So if I want to go to Mage, for instance, let's see what we've got here. An arcane whatever staff thingy. Yep, I could buy that for 300 bling or 4,000 gold. Acquiring the gold is not that difficult. The main problem is acquiring the storage for it. You need to upgrade your storage. Like, if I want to buy that staff, it's 4,000 gold. Can I get 4,000 gold fairly easily? Yeah, and I could do a few runs and get it. But I can't store that much. 
So I need to upgrade my storage, which actually in turn ends up costing life force, which is slightly annoying because life force is a little harder to get. Aside from that, what you can do is construct different buildings. You can use a summoning portal to bring creatures in. So all of these creatures that I've got here are in sort of aggro pack radius. I'm talking about World of Warcraft here, essentially. Once you get within aggro range, they will attack. Of course, if you're not being too careful, you can pull multiple packs at once, which would not be a good way of doing things. And you can place these areas around the castle, and there's a, a certain limit to how much defense you can have in any particular one area. That stops you stacking up too many creatures. The boss area is the big important one, because that's what opens this gate, which gets you through to the chest so you can loot them. So the boss area can be significantly more difficult. I actually have a boss character here. He is Count Snottingham. He is reasonably pesky. And I've thrown him in there with a bunch of like little, little creatures to help him out. I've got a couple of elites over to the side right here. And these guys can be bought with life force. They can also be upgraded and customized. Same with traps as well. So there's a giant spiked hamster wheel. There's a gelatinous wall. There's all sorts of little traps that you can actually place down here. And I've placed a few traps here and there. Mostly glue mines, which seem to be fairly effective. Now, the creatures themselves can also be upgraded through the research lab right here. Now, that allows you to upgrade your creatures through several levels. That will increase their effective creature level, physical damage, health, and you can also customize their abilities. And a lot of these guys have three different specializations. So, I've customized my Cyclopses so they will dash towards the hero. Alternatively, I could have them ground slam or I could do a punch combo. And most of the non-trivial creatures have the ability to do that, which is actually kind of cool. You can also, as I said, just level them up. Now, free to play. Always a concern, isn't it? Because we talk about the notion of pay to win pretty much every time. And while this is a PvE game, it is still also a PvP game. Strange, isn't it? The idea is, since you are fighting more often than not through the castles of other players, your abilities, as well as your ability to defend your castle, make you more powerful. So if you are able to buy that power, then that could be a problem. Now, of course, getting my boss creature wasn't too difficult. It's only 800 life force. But if I keep going down, you'll see, of course, that a lot of these guys end up being pretty expensive. By the end of this, once your summoning portal is ranked 6, though, you will be hitting bigger castles, which means you will be making significantly more money. So is that valid? Is it a concern that you can, say, buy these creatures with real money instead of unlocking them with life force? Not necessarily, and that's mostly because it you could buy as many creatures as you like, but your level is still a concern. You're not going to be able to take on guys that are much higher level than you and take their castles out and, more to the point, level up your own castle by just buying a bunch of stuff. But I think there is a certain level of advantage. Like, there are certain tiers of castle you'll end up going into. People are going to run into my castle, and they're going to run into this elite dude, which the other guys might not have. Admittedly, it does only cost 750 life force to get him, so it's not that bad. And in fact, it's probably much easier to save up that life force than it is anything else, especially considering that these mines over time are going to build up a lot. The capacity of this mine is 600. It produces 70 life force an hour. So I go to bed, I get back up, I've got two mines that are just sitting there full of life force, I can get a couple of those creatures. It's hard to say without going to much higher levels, I think, as to how much pay-to-win factor really is there. It's the same with the gear as well. Being able to buy gear for real money instead of for gold is potentially a concern as well because it means that you are more effective in your opponent's castles. Ubisoft has always kind of walked this line between acceptable and not acceptable when it comes to free-to-play business models. I think that Ghost Recon... Online is a pretty good example of that. You'd say, mm, uh, 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 you know, it's it's hard to say. It's not like outright buying power. It's not like you can't get this stuff for the in-game currency. And the fact that you can mine currency overnight without doing anything is actually kind of a big deal because that means that it doesn't really give a massive advantage to those who have way more time to play. This is kind of an equalizer here. But admittedly, other players do have that as well, and they will be able to progress faster than you. So... For the most part, I haven't seen a problem with it yet, but it is, it's it's difficult to say. Okay, so, at the moment, I don't think anyone's attacked me. The cool thing is you can actually watch the attacks. This is actually pretty neat. You've got replays available, which is very cool because it lets you learn what's good about your defenses and what isn't. 
Right now, I'm shielded because I've been attacked too many times, which means that they can't loot my stuff, but they will still gain stuff from it. Last few times, my defense has actually won. Let's find out how my defense won, shall we? We're going to watch a hapless hero run right into my castle and get absolutely destroyed. What a nice-looking sword the warrior has there. So Omra Siliar is heading in. He runs past my dual cannon, and more to the point, he runs straight into my dual cannon. There's a lot of damage, but it's annoying. Runs straight into my Cyclops, so he'll be able to take him out without too much of a problem. He's only a level 4 creature, so he gets beaten up but some losses. And hello, Pete Poundmore comes in. He's level 8. He's not messing around, is he? Absolutely not. He currently has the punch combo ability equipped. And suddenly, this level 8 creature is beating the snot out of this level 5 hero. So, my elite at the door there is a bit of a pain. Since then, I've actually customized the castle even more to have some slow mines around this area, so when the hero tries to run away, he'll run right into a pile of glue, which means that Pete Poundmore will, well, pound more. He's pretty good at it. And he's dead. Yes, indeed. The cool thing about that is that if someone dies in your castle, you can actually loot them, so you gain like 150 gold plus reward for that, so that's kind of nice. Alright, let's get to the other part of the game, and that is the idea of attacking a castle. So we're going to go do that. Most of these castles are currently shielded. That means that they've been attacked a little bit too much in the past number of hours. You can eventually be attacked. You will lose stuff. I mean, it's really as simple as that. But you are shielded from being just looted and losing all of your actual cash in the bank. So as far as I can tell, it seems best to like spend it as much as you can because they loot stuff that you currently have. So if you don't have anything, then you're not really worth much, are you? No, you are not. So, there's a region map here, which allows you to go to various places, including the friend zone. This is where all of your friends are, which is cool. I mean, the idea of competing with your friends and building castles that they have to invade and so on and so forth, I think is a really, really nice way of doing things, so that's cool. And then there's these story areas that, pro that you end up progress yeah, try again. progressing through. In this case, I'm in the Scented Gardens. Levels 5 through 9, and every time you beat the boss, you will end up getting access to a new region with higher level stuff. More rewards, more risks, as you might imagine. Now here you can also equip your hero. So if I happen to have any items that might be useful... No, I don't think I want that one. I like my armor, thank you very much. It's Crystal Rod versus the amount of damage that my current staff does is not so good. Not really a big fan of that. Thank you very much. And those are for knights, so we'll throw those away. Absolutely. Yeah, do I want the physical armor? Maybe I do. Minus 32 health is not that much. I have 1,100, so yeah, we can do that. We can do that. All right, nice. So, after I've done that, I might want to grab some potions, actually, before I leave. It's usually a good idea, so I'll go to my potion brewery. can buy some potions. Five health potions, 650 gold. Sounds like a lot, but gold is way easier to get than life force in my experience. So, yeah, I'll happily do that. Make sure it's equipped because, love of God, I keep... Since you can't change the equipment within a level, I keep forgetting to actually equip my stuff, which is not that helpful. Okay. Let's find something worthy of attacking. So there are NPC castles you can attack. Like this one, for instance, the Cyclops Gym. We can give that a shot. Generally speaking, these are unshielded, which means you get bigger rewards from them. But it depends. I mean, player castles can give you better rewards as well. And more often than not, they're terribly designed, so you can get through them quite nicely. All right, a Cyclops. We can zap that very easily. Down you go. All right, let's try and find our way through here, shall we? That is not, in fact, a barrel. That's a Squidly. I would not mess with it. There we go. I've equipped a couple of different abilities here. So I have a number of interesting things. Let's try and get the Defender Tron out of play, shall we? There we go. And you can sit in this damage until the end of time, if you don't mind. There we go. So once you work your way through this, you are able to, if you do it in time, access a large chest of money at the end, usually life force and gold. Now, if you don't make it in time, then that will close off to you. So you need to basically three-star the level in order to get the maximum reward from it. So it is kind of a speedrunning game. In fact, it is a speedrunning game. Those are chickens. They're, I don't think they're going to do all that well. No, no, I don't think so. All right, there we go. Avoid the traps. You will also gain loot every once in a while. 
which is always nice. I mean, that is the point of the game, after all. You'll be able to use that loot to upgrade your character. Okay, this is about to get really interesting all of a sudden. Oh, I can't do any damage to him while he's like that, unfortunate. Good to know. Let's try and have him sit there, shall we? This guy is a little bit tough. Ugh, more t tougher than I thought he was, actually. Get down some more fire, grab that health from under there. There we go. He's going to die eventually. That's what we like to see. All right. Now make my way. <laughs> Let's get hit by the hamster wheel on the way out. There we go. Make my way through here. Bust my way through the door. And grab myself some gold and life force. And that really is about it. Now, most of these castles are designed to actually be done in a few minutes. And if you don't do them in a few minutes, you fail anyway. You don't get the maximum amount of reward. So I've got plenty of life force, plenty of experience. Got some nice boosts there since I'm running some timed boosters right now. And that's it. That That's what the game is. However, you can attack castles, which are not, in fact, NPC created. And that's where things start to get very interesting indeed. Uh, that castle has defeated no less than 16 heroes. Hmm. There's nine traps in it. Castle level seven. Bring it. We'll give it a shot. Let's see how it works out. If he's got lots of big creatures, at least I will be able to use the Nightmare Cage to keep them out of the way for a while. Alright, so initially some glue mines I need to try and avoid here. Slightly annoying. I want to set them off. There we go. Don't want to be snared in anything particularly dangerous. Okay. Basic fire trap. Not really too much of a problem. There we go. So we'll eliminate these first creatures here. What concerns me is that he's got... Some kind of dinky creatures. I expect there to be something much, much more horrible later on. There we go. Grab the life force and the gold. And the fact of the matter is that I'm currently going through a castle that has been designed by somebody, like a real player. And I'm stealing his stuff. You know, that's why I'm here. I'm here to nick his money. That's cool. I mean, that's a seriously compelling reason for me to go and attack this castle. Very compelling indeed. None of that. Thank you very much. Poorly conceived defenses against the might of a mage. There we go. My mage is quite nicely set up for this kind of area. Turns out there was actually nothing there at all, so we will have to make our way through the trap, get out of the way of the hamster wheel. Three cyclops. All right. And they're going to bash me right into the hamster wheel. That's a nice little combo. That's a really nice combo. I'm actually getting perma stunned here. I would really rather they were sitting in that nice little conflagration of mine, but turns out they really don't want to do that. All right. There we go. That should be a little bit bet to get a just they're not messing around not at all we're gonna actually have to use a potion here embarrassingly enough there we go take one of them out of the fight second one and then we can finish off the third i guess those two three level eight cyclopses were the majority of this guy's defenses currently less than half time left so i'm gonna have to do a little better than this why did i stand on the hamster wheel i don't know all i know it was particularly stupid Trying to, you know, avoid the traps is generally a good way of doing things, I tend to find. And take the Defender Tron out. He doesn't really do a lot of damage, but he does make it very hard to kill everything else. There we go. Keep going, keep going. Another big pack. Let's try and take these archers out. They're the ones actually doing damage. There is a reasonable amount of strategy involved in the actual combat. As you can see, the combat is limited in terms of the abilities you can bring into the fight. You can bring in four abilities as well as your main attack. I don't think I'm going to kill this stuff quick enough, actually. This could be a real big problem. Ouch! These Cyclopses are a pain in the ass. There we go. I'm trying to kill this stuff as quickly as I can, but I think I might end up being out of luck. Oh, I'm so close. No, I'm, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. I don't think. Come on. Oh, too late. I'm not going to get his loot. How horribly upsetting. Oh, well, I got something out of it at least. As you can see, it locks down because I was too slow. Sad face. Oh, well, never mind. Almost made it. Got a bunch of experience from it and a couple of crowns, so I can't really complain too much. I will raid this castle, get myself a reward for that. 
and that, as they say, is that. I mean, that's what a mighty quest for epic loot actually is. You'll go through these regions, defeat the boss at the end, and then you'll gain another region to access. I could try that. I think it, it may be a little bit too much for me, but... Hmm. Yeah, I'll probably get murdered if I attempt that one. Makes a little bit more sense just to beat on these little guys right now. Admittedly, the interesting thing about looting these l lower level castles is if you actually screw it up, you get penalized in a very big way. You lose a lot of crowns. I'm still not 100% sure what these crowns are actually for, frankly, but it's an interesting idea nonetheless. Does this guy even have any defense? Well, this shouldn't take too long. There you go. I'll have them all sit in the fire. <laughs> not too difficult to eliminate. These summoners are a pain in the ass, but nothing we can't kill off. There we go. Thank you very much. Mage is a pretty fun class. There are two other classes available, as you saw earlier. The Warrior and the Archer. Personally, I picked the Mage. It's just my thing. Oh, yeah. I can. This castle is not particularly well designed against someone with a lot of AoE, it would see. Admittedly, there are plenty of castles whereby AoE will not save you because they'll just have focused on a lot of big single-target creatures, in which case you generally get horribly murdered. Which is pretty good. I'm not going to get his loot at the end because he is shielded, but... Nice quick thro run through the castle and a three-star and all of those pickups I will certainly not complain about. Alright, and there we go. What is interesting is just how quickly you can do these runs, and I think maybe, just maybe, that might actually help in the sense that the game is actually quite repetitive. I mean, it is the same thing over and over again. The castle building aspect right here is an interesting thing to relax to, and being able to watch heroes completely fail at trying to make their way through your castle is quite cool. I've got to say, I like that a lot. And you can even gain resources by doing so. And there, there are design elements to it. There really, really are. There's, it's not just dump everything down and hope for the best. The design of your castle does matter in a big way, and it actually does affect its efficiency quite nicely. It is repetitive, though. But is that a bad thing? Well, no, not really. Not necessarily. I think it's something you can very easily play in short bursts, and the fact that you can earn currency while you're offline cements the fact in my mind that this is a game that's kind of designed to be dipped into for 20 minutes, half an hour when you've got the time, and then you dip out of it again, then you come back, you build some stuff, you raid a few castles here and there, and you can play it at your own pace, and I appreciate that. The genre-melding nature of it and the fact that you are going up against castles that were built by other people adds a really interesting element of challenge. Get a few friends in there, raid the castles in the friend zone, and suddenly you get this very nice competitive side of things, whereby you are building castles to try and defend against your friends who are trying to steal all your stuff. That's neat. That's really, really neat. It's an idea that I think was nicked from Facebook games, stuff like Monster Mind is a good example of that, but I think they've taken that kind of social game aspect and built a real game out of it which is not something that happens all that much. So the Mighty Quest for Epic Loot, ladies and gentlemen, in my opinion, very interesting, very cool, a lot of fun to be had. Simplified, certainly, in terms of its actual loot aspect. If all you're looking to do is get a game whereby you are looking to loot stuff and have Diablo-style combat, then this is not as good as other games that do that. I mean, I don't think there's any real question about that, quite frankly. Something to bear in mind. But that's not where the game's strength shines. It's the synergy between the attack and defense ideas. Attack other guys' castles, defend your own against them who are trying to steal your stuff. And the whole dungeon design aspect is very interesting indeed. The individual components, as you might imagine, are weaker than a game that focused entirely on that. That is to be expected. But the whole, very interesting, I think. Very interesting indeed. I'm having a lot of fun with it, actually. I really am. I'm jumping into it every now and again. I'll get the stuff from my mine. I'll add some more traps. I'll upgrade my dungeon a little bit more, gain access to more stuff, and then go raid a couple of innocent. I say innocent. No, they all deserve it. Every last one of them deserves it without question. Yes, indeed. Go raid some castles. I'm storming the castle, ladies and gentlemen. I have my sword. It's metal, and you love metal. Please do go check this out. It, it doesn't have a release date as of yet. You can buy in if you like. 
it's really up to you by buying a premium currency pack. I don't really know if the pay-to-win elements will actually become a problem later on. They might. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. They That could be a thing. It's hard to really say at this stage, and it's hard to comment on that stuff when you're doing a first impressions video. But whatever the case, right now, I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I think the concept is suitably interesting to really have me come back time and time again to raid some castles and upgrade mine and do all sorts of great, cool stuff. So there you go. I'm gonna go steal this guy's stuff, if you don't mind. Ladies and gentlemen, my name has been Total Biscuit. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.